if Samson was to lose 10 pounds and, and he was to gain that conditioning, that could be the difference between first and second, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when you... What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fuzzy Fitness. So we aren't really done with the Arnold Classic UK figure. Well, let's talk about the next one as it is just three weeks away. The Arnold Classic South America, or also known as Arnold Brazil. We are the favorite from Brazil. Rafael Brandao is looking to take that win and qualify for the Olympia 2024. So at this point, it is clear as the sky that if Rafael Brandao and Neil Hill do their job right, like they did in Arnold, Ohio, where Brandao plays third behind Samson Dauda and Hadi Chupan. Rafael is gonna win this show without a shadow of a doubt. And this is gonna be his second Arnold Brazil win. He also won this show back in 2021. So Rafael Brandao was clearly in the third spot at Ohio. And everyone agreed that out of all the guys who took one year off, more than a year off actually, guys like James Hollingshead, guys like Antoine, guys like Mohamed Chaban, Brandao turned out to be the best out of all of these guys. So the new picture and the caption suggests only one thing. They are gonna try to come in harder and further for this upcoming Arnold Brazil. And that is based on the competition that he's gonna face there. There is no more Hadi Chupan or Samson Dauda in the picture. Both these guys are done with their contest run and all the other guys who plays third on boards. Guys like Akeem Williams, guys like John Del Rosa. Realistically speaking, they aren't gonna be able to beat Rafael Brandao at this point, especially Rafael at his best. So, is Rafael Brandao ready to take that big jump and pose a threat to a guy like Samson Dauda? No, I don't think so if he isn't there just yet. How many more pounds do you think Rafael would need in order to stand next to Samson and be really, really competitive and possibly beat him. And is that possible in the next year or so? I'd say it's going to be a two-year process, guys, and probably eight to ten pounds. And even his coach Neil Hill talked about it on the Muscle and Fitness podcast. Even Neil Hill thinks that Rafael Brandao isn't there just yet. They want to be a serious Mr. Olympia title contender in another two years. Meaning Rafael Brandao will try to keep on adding more size, more mass, without compromising his beautiful lines, without compromising his aesthetic shape. Because that has been his biggest strength. And that is something he did from 2022 to 2024 as well. It'll be a two-year process, guys, because listen, you can rush the process, but you start to lose that intricacy, the muscle. We've seen it time and time again with athletes. They balloon up. But what happens, they, they start to lose that finer detail. It's really difficult. When you start losing that finer de detail and intricacy, it's very, very difficult to get it back. And eventually, if he continues to do that, he is going to be a Mr. Olympia title contender for sure. I mean, how often do we hear from the judges? That this Ivy Pro has no weak poses. He doesn't have any weak shots. So this is what was said about Rafael Brandao after the Arnold Ohio weekend. So realistically speaking, how high can Rafael Brandao place at the Olympia this year? Look, he isn't beating guys like Hadi Chopin, Derek Lensford, Sam Sandaldo, Nick Walker, or even Brendan Carey this year. And considering how good Hunter Lebrana looks and how good Andrew Jack has been looking lately, it is gonna be hard for him to crack top six. But from seventh onwards, that is up for grabs. Nick Walker was asked this question who is going to be his biggest competition at this year's New York Pro. So the mutant always speaks his mind, that too without filters. And this is the answer we can expect from a guy like Nick, who was top 3 in the world just 2 years ago. And a guy who believes that he is going to be Mr. Olympia this year. I mean, I guess the cheesy answer would be to say me, right? I'm the biggest, I am my own biggest competition. Um, but... I don't have one. I'm going to win. Now, it would not have hung Nick Fokker if he took Tony Burton's name, as he is the winning and the defining champion at the New York Pro. And who, by the way, looks absolutely amazing three weeks out of this next show, which is gonna be Arnold Brazil. Or Nick Fokker could have also said Rubil Mosquera's name, because Chris Carmen, his trainer, has confirmed that he is going for the show. He's gonna be there in New York. On top of that, Nick Fokker really admired Naxila's physique at Pro Pro Weekend. But still, he believes he is in the league of his own, and there is just no way any of these guys can challenge him. And he isn't the only one who believes that. 99% of the bodybuilding community agrees with him on this. And Nick Walker doesn't just want to win the New York Pro. He plans to dominate it, because that will put him in a very good position for Mr. Olympia 2024, a show that he's planning to win. 
Now, since we mentioned Antonio Botan as well, so right now at this point, he is 10 pounds up from his Olympia stage weight. So he isn't obviously going to be that heavy on the Arnold Brazil stage because we still have three more weeks to go. And it's so common for most of these guys to drop at least five to seven pounds or even more during the final peak week, during that drawing out process. But still, I am sure that he has put on some quality muscle on his frame. Now, all that being said, there isn't one thing missing from Tonio's physique. For his frame, he is close to perfection. But then again, for the men's open bodybuilding, size does matter. And that is a one big criteria for the men's open bodybuilding. And Nick Walker is the biggest and the freakiest of them all. So Tony Button might have a better chance against a guy like Rafael Brandao. And that is going to be in just three more weeks. And then he's going to be going up against Nick Walker in another nine weeks. So do let me know what you guys think. Can Tony Button beat Rafael Brandao? It is really unbelievable how the reigning 212 missed Olympia. Sean Pearson keeps getting bigger and rounder at the same time. His proportions just keep getting wild this year. And this is his offseason. And he is pushing towards the heaviest weight of his entire bodybuilding career. But still, he looks so lean, his waist isn't changed one bit. He's able to hit that deep vacuum tattoo at such a heavy weight. And that is a very impressive sight to see at his current size. So we all know Kion is going to be untouchable from the front. Even last year, he was able to beat Sean in all of the front shots. The only shot that he lost to Sean from the front was the most muscular. And it seems like this gap between Kion and Sean is going to get bigger this year from the front. And even in this progress update, when you see Kion turn around, the improvements that he has been making in his back shots, that is also looking ridiculous. It is going to be tough for anyone to catch him. Specifically in the 212 division, I don't think there is anyone who can catch him. The future for Kion Pearson is definitely men's open bodybuilding. And he has stated it multiple times that he would like to end his career in the men's open class. And he did say that if he wins the Olympia in 2024, he would like to compete at the Arnold Classic 2025 in the men's open bodybuilding. And now with the prize money going up to half a million dollars, we all know Arnold Classic 2025 is going to have an insane lineup. And it is going to be great to see Kion test himself against the big boys against those big names of men's open bodybuilding. Next up, we have another physique update from none other than Andrew Jack. I don't think there was enough time for him after the Olympia to make improvements. That true to such an extent that he would have posed a threat to Samson Dauda at this year's Arm Classic Tour. Plus, the reason was his body just did not respond the way it used to after the Olympia 2023. So skipping this year's Arnold Classic Tour, that I am sure is going to turn out to be one of the best decisions of his entire bodybuilding career, especially in the long run. So as of right now, he looks round, he looks big, and he is in a great spot to start his prep for the Pro and go for that $100,000 prize money. Keep in mind, that is equivalent to what Samson Dada got as the third place finisher at the Olympia last year. So that is definitely a big payday. And I am damn sure a lot of big names are going to show up here because that is a lot of money. So I am very excited to see Andrew Jack this season because this is the first time his body has got some sort of rest and some sort of break since he turned pro back in 2022. Yes, you guys heard that right. He was continuously competing since he turned pro. First, he did Texas Pro, then the Arnold Classic UK, then the Olympia, then the Arnold 2023, then again Texas Pro and then the Olympia 2023. So right now, so far, it seems like he has been having a good off season. And I have to say, Andrew's talent exceeds everyone. And that includes Samson Dalda and Rafael Brandao as well. Because if he's able to bring more size and thickness to the stage, especially on his side, that is going to be a very tough Andrew to beat. So both Andrew Jack and Brandon Kerry were not at their best at the Olympia last year. And it is rumored that both these guys will compete in Dubai Pro. And hopefully some other guys like Wigan Grimes will also jump into that show. So I'm sure this is going to be one hell of a show and we're going to see one hell of a battle at the way pro this year. So hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and smash the subscribe button if you want to come back for more. Thanks for watching.